and I've got top 10 remaining NFBA free agents. So before I rank this top 10, I want to give you guys a few guys that just barely missed the cut. My next up that just barely missed this cut of the top 10 free agents remaining in the NBA right now is Danielle Garinari, Seti Osman, Alondes Williams, Evan Fournier, Jordan Goodwin, Josh Primo, Thad Young, Montrez Harrell, Biznak Biombo, Markeith Morris, Ish Smith, and Wesley Matthews. A few guys there are great veterans that just barely missed the cut for that reason. One guy I'm very high on is Alondis Williams. Now, he's a guy that I'd say, you know, for guys like him, Josh Primo, a couple of the young guys I just listed to, you know, it's not necessarily finding a – they don't they have a more constricted teams in terms of who they would possibly go help out right now. Because of them being young, they need to go to a roster that they're going to be able to play and impact. So, obviously, right out the gate, you know, we saw Josh Primo with Clippers last year. It wasn't a lot of minutes. When you're playing on a contending roster, you know, there's not just a lot of minutes to go play. So going to this team where you can actually develop, we can actually grow, would be a huge thing for those guys. But that's why they didn't make my top 10 right there. But with that being said, there still are a lot of guys. You know, we're at a point now where a lot of people kind of are having their roster set. But there's a lot of guys that people are, are forgetting are currently NBA free agents. And there's actually a lot of guys that I think could be contributors on a roster this year. And these guys are all guys that obviously they're not going to fit on every single team. But generally speaking, they could help out a young team. They could help out a veteran team. All these guys are able to contribute. And so with that being said, here is my top 10 remaining NBA free agents on the board right now. At number 10, Landry Shamet. He's a guy that is a, a legitimate three-point shooter. Was playing in Washington last year. Obviously not a, not a high role, not a very successful team overall. But Landry Shamet, I have at number 10. He's a guy that can go in, space the floor for any team. That's what I got at number 10. Number 9, Davis Bertans. He had a good overall Olympic time. He's also had a great long NBA career over the past few years. But he's a guy that can space the floor. He's a big guy. He can shoot the ball from three. He could easily go and contribute on any roster you put him on, especially if it's on a veteran minimum to be able to round out a roster. At number eight, Taylor Horan Tucker. Now, this one's one that I know a lot of people have always said, well, he's still only 23 years old. Yeah, he's only he's very, very young still. He's still a guy that you could say is developing, but you know he still is raw. You know he still has potential. He still has a lot of room to grow. And we're going to be able to look forward to seeing how that pans out. But at this point of his career, he's been in the league long enough now where I'm comfortable saying, you know, he should be able to find a role on an NBA team. Whether that be as a young team, again, going out to a place like Utah where he's going to be able to kind of contribute and, and be on a young guy that could start a couple games, come off the bench, or he goes on a veteran team and actually accepts a role. I don't know exactly if that's going to be as a scoring role, facilitator, you know, defender, whatever the case may be, but he's the guy that I think in the right situation would be a great pickup for a team right now. At number seven, Robert Covington. He's been in the league for a long time, a great veteran. He is a great defensive player. Obviously, he's getting older now, so he's not quite the player he was a few years ago. But still, there's no reason he couldn't have him fill out a roster. The bare minimum, he's a good veteran vet. But you could also see he's a guy that can still stretch the floor, plays hard-nosed defense. He's the guy that I think I still am very high on. At number six, Dennis Smith Jr. The thing about DSJ is that he does have injuries in his past, You know, has limited, limited him throughout his entire career. But when he was healthy and he was playing last year for the Brooklyn Nets, he had, in my opinion, a bounce back season. He showed that he's able to play a role. And that's what you need in the NBA. Not everybody's going to be a star player. He's not the guy that he was drafted to be originally, but he can certainly go in there and play a role and play at a high level. So having a guy like Dennis Smith Jr., I think he's a guy that proved himself already. You can have him be a, a second or third depth guy at the point guard position. And so I'm a little bit shocked he didn't, he didn't sign a deal yet because, like I said, great locker room guy. He showed they can play a role last year. We'll love to see Dennis Smith Jr. get signed to a deal. Jay Crowder at number five for me. We know who he is. He had, ever since the trade when he went out to Milwaukee, he held out, or originally he held out for the Phoenix Suns, and then he went out to Milwaukee. You know, it wasn't quite himself. He couldn't find the right rotation in Milwaukee. He was out of sorts. He didn't look very good. But I still like Jay Crowder a lot. You know, he's a good player, a veteran player, hard-nosed player, and I think you could get him in the right situation, right team, you could have him be a regular season contributor and, and potentially even still contribute when he gets to the postseason. Then I've got at number four, Marcus Morris. We saw how good he was with the Cleveland Cavaliers, especially in the playoffs. Took him a little bit to get going, you know, played on a few different teams last year, but he's a guy you could still count on. He's a veteran guy. You know he's going to protect whoever the stars are whenever he's in the game or not in the game, but he's still a legitimate guy that you can go contribute. Wouldn't be surprised if he gets signed to a deal pretty shortly either. Then I've got number three. This one has had a lot of news in the past few days, 
because there was rumors that he got a deal to go to the NBA. He decided to pass on that, and now he's signing and heading over to the EuroLeague. He's now come out and said that, no, I didn't actually get a deal in the NBA or an offer. I guess I talked to a couple of teams, but I didn't get any deal or offer, so that's why he's going to the EuroLeague. And that's Carly Jones. Two years in a row, on international play, he's been one of the top players out there, regardless of who they are, regardless of the country. He's put on a show, a triple-double in the expedition games against the, against the Team USA. And then you go through, and he, every game he played at a pretty solid level had a great showing. I'm surprised he's not signed yet. You know, he's a guy that clearly knows how to play his role. He scored the ball some, yes, but it wasn't like he was a guy that needs to go in there, score the ball a bunch, and get a lot of shots. He could contribute. He can rebound. He was really good for his size, actually. He can facilitate. So a guy like Carly Jones is the guy that I think should be in the NBA. Surprised that he's not signed yet. We saw Yabasuda get signed the other week. Now that Carly Jones is here, and it appears he's going to Euro, but I'm sure there's probably an opt-out clause. I'm not exactly sure I haven't studied his exact contract he signed. I'm shocked he's not going to be in the NBA. He deserves it, especially if that's what he's pursuing and wanting to go do is be in the NBA. So he's at number three. Number two for me, Lonnie Walker. I think he's a guy that, once again, similar to Dennis Smith Jr., played with the Brooklyn Nets last year. He started off this season red hot, playing at a very high level. Looked like he was not only going to get a deal really quickly, there's going to be a significant upgrade on that deal. And then injuries came and set back again. You know, he's still a young guy. We've seen the high potential. And I feel like this is one that we're going to see get signed in the relatively near future because it's more so what's the opportunity. You know, I'm sure a lot of teams would say, hey, here's a minimum deal. We want you to go play and and you can go kind of fill out a bench or whatnot. But maybe he's looking for training camp. Maybe he's looking for an opportunity where he can actually get minutes. And I think that's what he can go get because he's a guy who can get buckets at will. You know, he is a, a, a very athletic player and a guy that can also really build, in, build on to his role and, you know, accept whatever that role is. He's also a very good locker room presence as well. So that's what I've got number two. And number one, this is the one that is still shocking he's even available, or at least that we don't have a lot of big news regarding his pursuit for being a top player being signed right now. Markel Fultz. This is a guy, I know a lot of these guys, and this is probably a large reason to why we have this list here. A lot of these guys have injury issues. Markel Fultz is no different than a lot of those guys. That being said, though, Markel Fultz, last year, you know, he kind of fell the rotation a little bit in Orlando. It wasn't exactly what people had expected when you talk about his season because the prior year, he had a great season. Then last year, you know, injuries caught up to him again, and they had a lot of guys that took big jumps in Orlando. Jalen Suggs was healthy. He played at a high level. You had all these different guys that came together, and, and you know, he kind of got pushed out of the rotation. But there's no reason to me that Markel Fultz is not in the NBA right now. You still have a guy that can contribute that that if healthy and and you know playing in this role, you could see Markel Fultz being a guy that is capable of, you know, having a starting role in the NBA potentially. You know, if not, at least a high-level bench player. So uh, this could be a guy that once again he's just trying to find the right role for himself. I don't see how it could possibly be a situation where Markel Fultz is just unavoidable. You know, he is a guy that I think can legitimately impact just about any NBA team. Like I said, he could be at a high-level backup or even be a potential starting a starting point guard, depending on the team you put him on. So for me, I think Markel Fultz is a great pickup, and I would not be surprised to see a couple of these guys get signed up in the next few weeks as we head into training camp, because a lot of these guys can contribute to a team. As I said, we don't necessarily have a superstar player left anymore, but these are guys that can help fill out your roster, be good veteran presences, be a depth piece, or at least be guys that can fit in the rotation. And a couple of these guys, I said Markel Fultz, could possibly even be a starter on the right team. So that is who I got my top 10 to rephrase them. Landry Shamet, Davis Bertons, Taylor Horton Tucker, Robert Covington, Dennis Smith Jr., Jay Crowder, Marcus Morris, Carly Jones, Lonnie Walker, and Markel Fultz. That's what I got with my top 10 remaining NBA free agents at this point in time. <laughs>